Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Comment Forest, the weekly show where we discuss your thoughts, your feedback, your questions, and your ideas. This is the 26th showing of this fantastic group event where myself, Zach, Jake, and Gabe get together and have a little powwow all about the Switch, Nintendo, and what's been going on this week. We are winding down the summer months, but that doesn't stop you guys and girls from coming in with one of the best sets of comments I have ever seen. This week was full of juicy, delicious, squishy, ishy, amazing comments, and we're going to bring them all your way. I don't even think we have time to talk about our weeks. Instead, we're going to talk about your weeks, and I'm going to kick things off right away. But before I do, Jake and Gabe, Duh. tell everyone your favorite word this week. Sassafras. Thank you. Trigger. Good. America. That's that's what that's what the people need to know. That's what they want to hear. Uh, last week we discussed a lot of interesting things, such as the Pokemon we should be, uh, and some of those things will come back up. But we're going to start with something new and something, frankly, the newest, which is a comment from Diamond Creeper twenty three, and it's about this lawsuit. If you didn't see, uh, Nintendo was sued last night by Game Vice, this company that makes these attachable controllers, and it seems to be a sham of a suit, but. It's big news nonetheless. And Diamond Creeper says, if they stop Switch sales, I will go to the owner of Game Vice and throw Wikipads at them. <laughs> now, the Wikipad is the thing that they claim the Switch copied off of, and I just like Diamond Creepers. First of all, I like the fact that he is so just dedicated to the Switch cause, but second of all, I like that he owns Wikipads. <laughs> Yeah, I don't well, think I think he's gonna buy them and then throw them in. But I went, well, they're sold you? out. You can't get them. Oh, they're okay. out of stock. Wait, no, why no, you... no. They're not sold out. They are discontinued. Okay, discontinued. <laughs> why not unavailable? You, why would you categorically throw when when you could just put him in a game vice? Just lock him up in a game vice. Oh, yes. We're gonna vice. We're gonna vice grip the owner of game vice. Exactly. That's the best solution. Nintendo will be all right. Like, this lawsuit is, like, I said during the video, like, it's sort of silly. But, you know, shout out to Game Vice for trying to make their money any way they can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. That's your shit. Uh, we, 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 we've talked about it. I don't think this is going anywhere. It seems like a, a grasping at straws type situation. Um, but Trev TV, Jake, is also grasping for something a little bit more concrete. He's grasping for a direct. He says, when do you guys think the next Nintendo Direct is coming, and what do you think Nintendo will talk about? Uh, po Pokemon? No. I think they're just going to wait till Odyssey? No. I, we'll, get a, we'll get a Fire Emblem Warriors one, probably. Okay. Maybe we get like a big fall one, like hey, like hey, this is what we have coming this fall, and they'll showcase Odyssey and Xenoblade and uh, Fire Emblem and all whatever else they have coming, I suppose. But yeah, I, I like someone's idea as well that maybe they do a Nindies like part two, kind of updating mm -hmm. the state and show of most of more no. games that won't come out. Forever. Yeah, no, 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 no. Give us the Nindies that you originally announced. The, the... But, but one that like has a lot of dates because the first Nindies was mostly just like hey. We got these games, and now they could do a montage that says, like, Stardew Valley, blah, blah, Enter the Gungeon, blah, blah, and I, give I, us actual I want, info. I want Flippin' Death, and I want Wargroove. Give me those two. And and, and um, Shakedown Hawaii. Give me those three, and after that, you can make another Nindies. I do think that an Odyssey Direct is... I don't know that that happens just because of the nature of that game. You know, it's not like Splatoon where you're like, check out this mode, and check out this mode, and yeah, check out this gear. more multiplayer stuff. You don't think we get? Yeah. You don't think that we get a direct before Mario? Though? I think we do. I do think we get a direct before Mario. I just don't know that we get a dedicated one again because of the nature of that game. I feel like it would be received as a spoiler kind of thing as opposed to an informative thing. Yeah. Like what? What more are you gonna say? Okay, here's all the worlds. Here's all the mechanics. I don't. I don't know that people want that. Amiibo. I like Jake's idea. I like the fall. Yeah, more amiibo maybe. I I do like a fall thing or like a like a Q4 kind of. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving update. my idea to Jake, but sure. Oh, well, yeah, you know, has been gay, we had the idea, but now it's Jake's. <laughs> yep, congrats, Jake. Um, I do, I, if I had to put my money on it, I like that one. I like, I like a fall direct, kind of, you know, giving some info on Fire Emblem, some info on Odyssey, some maybe like solid release dates for some of the Nindies, maybe they just do an overall fall update. I do think also, we could get, towards the end of the year, a 2018 one. There there have been instances like that where they kind of like to lay the groundwork for the, the coming months. And maybe we can make this like a separate video where we like predict like what we think is happening in the fall. But I also like think that if they do have a fall direct, they have a 
controller of some kind for Odyssey. Arms had it, Splatoon had it uh, with the Joy-Con. So I don't think that Odyssey comes out and have it be the, like the biggest game of the year that isn't Zelda, and you don't have a controller like sold, whether it be a Pro controller or Joy-Con, something with, with uh, yeah. Odyssey. I think it's got to be Pro controllers because they still have the Splatoon Two Joy-Con to drop for uh, for the Americas. But no. yeah, I. It has been a little bit of a time. Um, I mean, there was the Splatoon 2 Direct. I feel like we forget about that one just because it was so tied to that game. But, I mean, Pokemon is also p- plausible with, with the two DS games coming, you know, and I don't know. There's been a lot of talk recently about, oh, like, yes, they're they're hard at work on the Switch game, but I don't know that we're ready for any info. So maybe, maybe Pokemon it doesn't get one this year. Maybe Directs are done for the year. I don't know. I don't know. Let us know your take in the comments. All right. In the meantime, Gabe. Barry King says, Are there any games you guys don't like, or just if there is any game you guys don't like, you just don't review it? Um, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of games we don't like. Spoilers. Uh, we didn't really like Rocket Fist. I, I hated Snake Pass, remember? Yeah, I think this is a, an interesting thing for YouTube as a whole, not just Switch Force, but just YouTube gaming in general. Like, if there are titles you don't like, do you cover them to alert people that you don't like them, or do you not cover them because it's kind of a depressing video to make? And I think in the past we've taken more of the approach of, hey, we're just not going to cover it if we're, we don't get behind it because, you know, it's not as fun and it's not as enjoyable to watch a video that is centered around sort of a, a disappointment or a negative approach. But I feel like it's something that we do want to do a little bit more of in the future in terms of just picking some games that look interesting. And then if they turn out great, great. And if they don't, then they don't. And that that's kind of what Jake mentioned with Rocket Fist. We were pretty excited for something that was short, quick, and, and a fun burst uh, multiplayer. And that didn't really deliver in the way that we wanted. And so we, end, at the end of the video, said we didn't recommend it. And I think that's, that's kind of a little bit of what you're going to expect going forward. And look, if we don't like something, say... You know, I don't know. Say Fire Emblem Warriors comes out and feels shoddy, we'll mention it. I have two examples um, for me specifically this week. I played and completed uh, Shadow Trigger. Uh, no. Phantom Trigger. Phantom Trigger. Phantom Trigger. I'm thinking of something else. Uh, Phantom Trigger. Uh, I liked it a lot at first, and I did the Let's Play, and I was going to do a review, but then I finished again. I'm like, okay, like this isn't as cool as I, as I thought. And then like I see that you guys aren't like super interested in the game, and if we see that you're not interested in the game, and we're just going to be negative on it, I, at that point, for me personally, I kind of feel like, hey, like maybe I shouldn't even speak on this. Um, another example, um, the the Match 3 game, what, what was that called? Iron Cast. Iron Cast came to Switch, and you know we almost made a video on that. But you know, I said like, frankly, like match three games are not for me. And personally, I don't think that the Switch Force audience is super into match three games. Um, and I know that that game has a little bit more to it, like there is strategy. But you know, when you like bog it down to its pure essence, it's still just a match three game that originally came out in like 2015. So th- things like that, like I think the other part of this puzzle is that there haven't been a lot of retail slash major releases so say for example there were a lot more of those then we would be covering those in in a way that if they were good or bad it didn't matter the hard part is a lot of the releases are these eShop downloadable onlys and it, it's kind of simple to to sift through and see which ones are being you know well received and which ones are kind of worth our time our dollar our, our video coverage and which ones aren't um so i think that plays into it a bit if there's a lot more you know 60 dollar games even though that seems counterintuitive i think we'd be more likely to cover those than we are to look and say like okay this looks like a very simplistic game that we're not going to like from the eShop. Yeah. eShop is tricky cuz you have games like 1942, like a lot of Neo Geo stuff. Like it's impossible to do everything. And um I don't think you guys would like it if we like did everything. So, you know, we we're, we're trying our best, right? Yeah. I th- I think I think like I said, I think we're going to um help uh balance that out with a little bit of a little bit of coverage of like you know some some switch games that you, you might want to avoid and things like that anyhow um and just to be completely transparent we have not ever been sponsored for any uh games and so therefore it's not like oh we're not doing it because we only can say positive things or anything of that sort uh we were invited to a few events but there was no money exchanged and there was no requirements or anything about coverage so um, that is that. Now, Marcus Galt comes in and talks about that Pokemon thing, and he says, the way the what the Pokemon question are you guys was asked, 
and discuss threw you off the correct answer. You are not each a Pokemon. You are all one Pokemon. One YouTube channel, three hosts. You are Dodrio. One body, the channel, <laughs> with three bickering heads, the hosts, that complement, contrast, and challenge each other while somehow still managing to give the body direction. I request that if you attend a Pokemon event, you wear one giant brown jumper over all three of you and each wear a terribly made cardboard beak. It'll go down well. Trust me. I, this is great. I, Why can't I, this be, is yeah. very... Hydria hey, cool. John. Hi Hydra John? Hydrogen? But it's not Hydra. Hy Hydra you know what I'm talking about? The three headed dragon Pokemon? Well, because they don't bicker. Mm, yes. Okay, fine. Well, I like Dodrio because it has a little bit of like dum dum to it. Can it be a Doug Trio? Oh, that too. Yeah, okay. So I, I like that Pokemon <laughs> is supporting our channel by having many or... options for our three headed nonsense. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Marcus, this was genius. And uh, if, if we had a comment of the week, I feel like it would be Marcus for just his innovative way of thinking. Yes. Could also be a Magneton. There's a lot of three-headed Pokemon. <sighs> There's a lot of threes in Pokemon. It's like they were preparing for us. Executor? I mean, all right. That's a lot the, more than three, but okay. Well, what if three of his head, two of his head, uh, I don't know. Some of his heads got smashed in. All right. Tracy C says, I practically live in a Warren. I have 12 rabbits. I can confirm that living like this is an excellent way of life. I like watching their reactions whilst messing around with their, the controller while waiting for teams in Splatoon 2. Each ear twitches ahoy. That's a lot of freaking rabbits. Like, I just picture you a, sitting on the floor life. playing Splatoon and having rabbits like hop all around you. Yeah, I mean, you can dress the, the, the rabbits as rabbits. Like, you can, you can maybe put a Mario outfit on one, Peach outfit on another one, Yoshi, and so on and so forth for all 12. Uh, maybe I know this probably sounds like anti-animal and i'm not at all but you could build like a mario plus rabbits board and put the rabbits there and let them like basically live out a strategy game battle fantasy yeah that, that'll be crazy but yeah that is a lot of pets though i've never had anywhere near that many pets i think i've always had the most pets i've ever had at once is two a fish and a dog see but even like having like two dogs or two cats can be like tricky i think anything over two is like overkill at least for me and the way i am so well, Tracy is six times the pet owner we are because yep. 12 rabbits. That's pretty awesome. Thank you for that that story. And I love the fact that, like, while you're waiting for Splatoon 2, I just picture you sitting in, like, this giant nest, and you're, like, the mama bunny, and they're all coming to you and biting the carrots from your pockets. All right. Game Biter says, do you think there's ever a chance of a new 2D Mario game with some real effort put into it? I mean, not one of the NSMB, uh, new Super Mario Brothers games, uh, but one with a cool art style, original world, great music, new ideas, basically the quality they put into most 3D Mario games. I thought this is a really awesome question because it does bring an interesting point up. You know, we are in an era where a lot of um, Kickstarter and indie platformers end up being either successful or loved or, or sometimes both and new super mario bros while very successful on the sales front i don't think has had sort of that that love behind them that the old mario games has and i feel like a lot of that love has shifted obviously to the 3d set and you know odyssey is incredibly hype but could nintendo would nintendo ever put effort into a another 2d one to deliver something wholly unique and not just capitalize on a pre-existing you know formula how unique can you make a 2D game anyway? Like, uh, very unique. Well, well, no, I know, but when like, I mean, strip it's down to a platformer. Essence, yeah, like when you strip it down to an essence, you're still running and jumping. Okay, if like, you strip everything down to its essence, it's the same. Well, I think I think the way that you would do it here is one of two ways. One, you'd have to change up the art style. The, the yes, I was also gonna say mechanics. I feel like you know we look at games like Inside, and I'm not advocating for Mario to be like Inside or Limbo, but that's something that has a lot more oomph because of the fact that it is taking a platformer, a puzzle platformer, and and utilizing and modifying it to sort of fit a modern era of game design. Now, I don't think that Nintendo would probably ever go that route. I feel like Mario will maintain his his method of movement and all that for, for a long time, but I think what they could do is original world and new ideas. I think that the new Super Mario Bros. series stays very, very true to the known lore of of the mushroom kingdom and i think where you could get very interesting is a new art style and an adventure that goes beyond um mario's typical environments and sort of typical enemies typical power-ups and you could perhaps create something that felt unique in in that way so if it was like a, a very steampunk mario or is a very 
you know, like futuristic Mario or something that delivered and, and therefore would give you new mechanics, not by like, oh, now Mario walks slowly and sneaks around, but just based on new enemies, new power-ups, you could kind of mix up the way that the platformer was executed by having this wholly original vision. And I think that would be absolutely awesome. I don't know that it happens, but I think if, if we ever get that vision we had before the Switch release of like Nintendo developing some downloadable exclusives for the Switch, I think it could see itself, you know, in in that way. What if it's they make instead of Mario World levels being very horizontal, it was a very vertical Mario with lots of wall jumping and like you had to go up to get to the top of like the castle or the to the, to the flag at the top of it was like mountaineering Mario. I mean, Mario's that would also, mountain invention, adventure, adventure, not invention. That'd be a throwback to um, you know you know donkey kong being at the top of of this like in, not infinite amount yeah. of ladders but all these ladders at the top and you have donkey kong there throwing barrels at you uh so maybe a little bit of a throwback to there uh, but you know art style wise i wish they would do something like like what uh, rayman um origins uh did where they like completely made it like very cartoony and, and like cool looking like a a 2d mario like that like with that art style would look really cool and vibrant and, and, and oh yeah i think i think like an evolution of mario world in in more of that drawn style would look great and i think they could use the the retro donkey Kong games as kind of a template right those games still maintained a lot of what made donkey Kong country fun and and special and yet were able to bring new ideas in you know they have the new um tag team options they have some of the new uh like the barrel blast stages they have some really innovative and awesome visual tricks in terms of going into the stage and having different layers of the stage and things of that sort so i feel like gosh maybe put retro on mario i, I don't you know Nintendo was willing to give Ubisoft a try at the Mario sort of genre. So so let Retro do something that they did with DK. That would be really freaking fantastic, I think. You know, Metroid Prime 4 obviously is where, you know, we, we would like them to be, but that's probably not. And they've already said that. So put Retro on Mario. I think that could be completely awesome. Be very interesting. All righty. Um, so what are the chances, says D Terrible Twins, of a Bowser solo game. Make Bowser kind of like an anti-hero. The story could just be that the Koopa Troopers abandoned him for a new leader, and now he's trying to get back to his throne or something. And again, this is the innovation that we'd love to see. Nintendo is bringing the games. They are always going to use their characters and franchises. But yeah, mix up the formula. And it was so fun in Bowser's Inside Story to get to be him. I do think a full game, whether it was RPG or platformer or something almost like... Uh, Overlord style would be really cool. Well, I mean, you'd have to give him some roller skates or something because he's too dang <laughs> slow to have to be actually take control of Bowser. But it could be like a tower defense game where like you're Bowser and you have like Hammer Bro towers and Goomba towers and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I think if Nintendo could adopt the PlayStation and Xbox thing of like making and, and funding some really great downloadables featuring their characters this is where a lot of these more unique ideas and quirky concepts could come into play for sure i like that idea a lot because they have they've, they've created such an in-depth universe with so many like lovable characters they could do so much like, like your waluigi and wario game the one i always want or yeah you know give bowser something completely different a sim management bowser's got to manage a new kingdom and it's like you know, a Sim City style thing or an uh, escapist style thing where basically you have to like manage this kingdom of minions and the, you know, recruit different ones or like a V, almost like Viva Pinata. I don't know. Something like that would be super freaking cool as well. I, I think we've, I think Mario Plus Rabbits has shown a gateway into what could be and Nintendo has stepped through that door and now we just want them to run all the way to the inevitable other side and, and give us all sorts of interesting options. Keep running, Nintendo. All right, Space Toad, and Toad from Outer Space, transmits his message via satellite, saying, this is a report from the Observing Actions Daily Space Station, Toads, where we are reporting that Gabe will, in fact, stop oppressing the Toad race, whether he likes it or not. If he says anything bad about us, Toads, anymore, we won't be the Observing Action Actions Daily Space Station anymore. We will be the Offensive Actions Daily Space Station. <laughs> Gabe, you are being threatened with a giant space toad laser. Eh. The thing about toads is that they can't do a whole lot. They just kind of listen, Gabe. They have a whole space station now. <laughs> this is good for them. This is this is escalating in the same way that events around the world are escalating, <laughs> and 
Uh, I would not take these words lightly, okay? You will face a fire and fury unlike anything the Mushroom Kingdom has ever seen if you don't stop your threats against the I Toad I am kind. taking them as lightly as I would be if I were in space floating around. That's how lightly Listen. I'm taking them. I just I love that Space Toad is here for this report. Thank you, Space Toad. Maybe we'll get Ground Toad uh, or Water Toad to give us a report from some of the other domains and let us know what they're planning to do to Gabe. But in the meantime, Gabe, you have been put on notice. Again, and I'm still here. <laughs> uh, Harris P says, question for Comic Force. Uh, what if two Kirby's kissed? I don't know. What if? Was he saying like, like if they tried to like suck suck up each other absorb no, each other no like he's saying what if they kissed he didn't say what if they absorbed each other well, what they, uh, good for Kirby and the what? other Kirby I don't know Harris P said this can Kirby even can they even kiss do they because Kirby doesn't have lips does he I mean he has a mouth you can just... is there a female Kirby <laughs> no I think I think just two different Kirby's like green Kirby and pink Kirby okay and they just kissed and they kiss and then the kiss stops and that's it you don't think they would, like, absorb each other, grant no, each other their no, ability? No, I, I think the ability changing happens once you are inside the other Kirby. During mm. just the... Uh, well, what if there was a lot of, lot, of, lot of sucking action? <laughs> I, don't, I don't... Yeah, Harris P. I don't know, buddy. Me. Harris, can you can you make a diorama of this? I think that, yeah, I think I think, I think the, the absorbing of power happens in his belly, so anything that... If it doesn't reach his stomach, then it's all good. Like most are bellies, um, Kirby's powers in the belly. So just just like with all of us. Um, I don't know what you're speaking of, Gabe. You'll have to give me a lesson later. All right. <laughs> Zach, Power is in the belly. Go ahead. That is that is the lesson of today's day. Okay. So next up, we're looking at a very interesting proposition here from Uncle Andrew YouTube. I want to see Gabe in a DK costume pretending to be a ballerina. Wow. Uh, Gabe, that's a bold statement, literally. They want <laughs> to see you be doing this. First I'm of more... all, where do you get a DK costume? Do they even have DK costumes? Or... I'm sure we can make one. I'm more interested that this is like a uncle. He's like a hunk and an uncle at the same time. That's that's the that's the best kind of uncle, actually. I would I want some hunk. I don't have any. Well, I have one kind of like semi hunkle. I I have no uncles. It sounds like a like a condition now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uncle free. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got rid of my uncle after years of treatment. <laughs> no, um, you, if you want to see this, um, Gabe does have a, a dancing bear uh, dance or juggling bear dance. So a happy juggling bear dance. So you could convert it to a happy juggling DK dance. Yeah, I, I, I can. We'll give you a little. We'll give you a tie that says DK, and you can yeah. do your do your dance. This live can, this can be a million subscriber special under the right circumstances i would do this um million subscriber special eh, let's get there all right next up uh we've got a comment from specifically J R O D R. 14 says, says how to play as black or white ink in splatoon step one change the display to grayscale enjoy <laughs> p.s the name is pronounced as if every letter was separate. Thank you. J R O What what does that stand for? Junior Rodeo Operator Driving Race Car. Okay. Now let's let, let's all let's all have a shot at it. I think it is Juror Receptacle Odin Dog Rancid. Gabe, you just did like a, a like an ink blot test. You just said the first words that came. That doesn't even go together. <laughs> Jake retrieves odors during rest. There you go. <laughs> wow. Or Jake, Jake, what's a word for like puts out that sort of R? Jake, huh? Re Jake releases odors during rest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there he does. I, I've slept next to Jake many times and he is a stinky boy. Yikes. Shh. They don't know I can't smell. Shh. Oh, that's a good one, Gabe. Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what was this question? <laughs> Change the gray skull. Okay, that wasn't a question. All right. Dot, period. We are, wa we're waffle. We're waffle. Surprise better be Lanky Kong. What's a surprise? So in reference to the arms. Uh, data mine. Data mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprise better be Lanky Kong. Lanky Kong would be a key. I mean, he basically was the original arms character. In Donkey Kong 64, he could punch his extendable Lanky Kong arms to knock out beavers left and right. So that would be interesting. And, and again, I don't know. 
if the surprise is meant as, as a surprise character or it's a character that is like a surprise type character like he has jack-in-the-box type arms or like jack-in-the-box oh. jester type body so he's and like I, ta- a- I talked about this more in depth in my arms uh video about the data mine but yeah I, I'm, I'm leaning towards more of the jester type character with um like so like surprise is like his code name I just want to see Gabe in a Lanky Kong costume. Forget DK as a ballerina. Let's do Lanky Kong as a baby. Gabe, I want you to have like a little bonnet and a pacifier and a rattle and your Lanky Kong baby. Sure. Again, I under, want... the, under the right circumstances, that can't Gabe, be Gabe, what are the right circumstances? You keep saying this. Yeah, mm-hmm. circum- circumstances. <laughs> circumstances. That was a close no. one. No, this is not. The, this is not the time. All right. All right. So wait, I have no. I have one more thing to add. There's a comment from Jay Maddock that I'm not gonna put up on screen, but I did see before, and this is about the arms characters. And they were talking about an arms character uh, code named Sweet in the data mine, and he says Jay Maddock says, "I like the idea for a candy character. He'd have two lollipops cross mounted on his back like swords, and a cotton candy beard and Twizzlers for arms." And one idea for an arm, uh, like, name could be the Jawbreaker, which I think is a fantastic <laughs> name for an arm. Or the character. The character's name could be Jawbreaker. You're making me You're making me love the past when I didn't eat healthy and I had nerds gumballs. Or nerds ropes. Remember nerd ropes? Don't like that. I don't – things that are too tough – okay. <laughs> Chewy things that are too tough to chew are not good in my brain. Okay. I don't like, like, really, like, chewy gummy bears – don't like gummy worms. Don't like nerds ropes. Please, if you're gonna if you're gonna bake me something or make me something or feed me something, Gabe, please, are you writing this down? Please yes. no. Talk about the right circumstance. I don't want overly chewy chews. <laughs> okay. Uh, but Liam Moore says choosing a team just for Marina is idiotic, and that is the reason why the popular votes in these Splatfests are so unevenly skewed. People have to get over their waifus and just choose the team they actually would prefer. I was team ketchup just because I like ketchup. No Marina involved in the decision. And we had a lot of feedback about the Splatfest and sort of the the uproar that came after based on the fact that ketchup played ketchup for most of the the weekend in more ways than one. Um, And and most people – what? I was just going to say, why can't they make the, you know, it has like the, the, you have to win two out of three components. Why can't they have the three components just be performance based and not be which team has more people? Well, because the vote is part of the fun, I think. But like, instead of having it be a vote, just have it be a team that you join and then that your performance on the team dictates how you win. Sure. And and they could do that. You can have more people and then you just win or you start with a bonus points. What's interesting is the most common train of thought in the entire video thread was that. People should stop choosing for Marina or Pearl. And, and maybe that's easier said than done, but I don't think the system, the way it's set up, changes. I personally would love to see them detach from Marina and Pearl and Marina and Pearl host it, but not align or you know make their allegiance known. But that probably won't change. The infrastructure is just there for that's how Splatfest will be handled. So I do think that, yes, this was the most common way to solve it. It's also the most difficult to implement because how are you going to mind control everyone that's making these decisions um but i almost wonder the more i think about it if it's if it's structured in a way that to to balance this exact thing so say ketchup does win 76 to 24 percent now ketchup is going to face off against mayonnaise way less often which means that mayonnaise would need to be successful less often in order to capture the other you know, points. Now, not to say that they have to be successful a less percentage because the percentage is what matters, not the not the amount. But again, in theory, it would be easier for mayonnaise to win. Just just these numbers are not accurate, but just roll with me here. 100 out of 150 games versus 1,000 out of 1,500 games. Okay. So, I don't know. I feel like I feel like there's going to be a little bit of anger either way and yes perfect world we detach from marina and pearl but most likely uh this will continue and hopefully we see the battles being more balanced um just oh yeah another person said like they need to just pick things that are less balanced but that's kind of hard to do i mean i could see with like the cake Oh, no, not cake ice i don't know ketchup mayonnaise maybe is a little bit unbalanced i feel like ketchup is more universally used than mayonnaise I but, think the yeah. cake ice cream one they thought was going to be quite balanced. Yeah. 
I think that, I think that was well, I think that was more dictated by the Marina Pearl thing because those exactly. Like, so were, and, and that's where I think people are finding frustration because is is it the fear of even if we do get a pancakes versus waffles or something like that that should be pretty even is Marina just going to win because of that? And that's why I don't know how you ever solve this unless you're going to detach them from the characters. Because I just trying to know. convince everyone, you know, not to follow their, as as Liam puts it, waifu is going to be very difficult. I just want to know if they're going to do more uh, aesthetic changes to Splatfest, like when you got to spray the ketchup of mayo uh, ink, if they're going to have more things like that. I'd like, like that. Like if they had like cats versus dogs, I know they already did that, but like, and then you have you like shoot cat- cats. No, you have a like cat or dog ears on your inkling while oh. you're playing. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'm about that. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Liam. All right. Moving on. Adam Ski 22 says, The ones I'm interested seeing are the file size for NBA, WWE, FIFA, Skyrim, etc. If the big third-party games like that are under 5 to 7 gigabytes, then the 32 gigabyte is pretty much compa- comparable to 500 gigabytes on other consoles. Great. That's, that's really, really an interesting point. Like, yes, obviously it's cool to hear Rayman and Rabbids and all that, but the real deal is going to be these games and how they compare to their PS4, Xbox One, PC counterparts. I mean, I feel like Rabbids is a you know real, like big, decent game. Um, but yeah, NBA is going to be interesting because we'll, you know we'll know how big it is on other platforms. And yes, it's not the, like the exact same game. We understand visually, uh, and, and content it's still supposed to be you know feature packed, but. What do you think? Do you think NBA is still like maybe 10 gigs or, or, or do you think it's like five? Well, I mean, I think we know safely it's going to be far smaller than the, you know, the other console counterparts. Yeah. Um, it, the, the Switch just is not set up to to handle that. So they are going to, you know, compress it down at some level. Um, you know, just to give you a little, little update here uh, or a little info. NBA 2K17 on PS4 um, was 47.66 gigabytes. That doesn't work for the Switch, right? That just doesn't work. So it's going to be notably smaller. Will it reach the 13 of, of Breath of the Wild? I don't know. But I think Skyrim is another really interesting one. Like, yes, that game is older. Yes, that game is not doing as many things as, as Zelda. But what is the file size of that? I do think that these games in particular, I would imagine if I had to guess, will be more in the Mario Kart 6, 7, 8 gigabyte range. Yeah, that's probably going to be like the medium for, for most of these games. Uh, just under 10 gigs. So I think over 10 gigs, you start getting into, you know, your huge Breath of the Wild type thing. So, Which um, is pretty interesting because then you could have like three or four downloadable games, sizable downloadable games on your Switch without having to get uh, another memory card. Yeah. Yeah. I. It, it is just interesting to think, again... It's going to be at least a fourth of what it is on Xbox and PS4. At, at the at the or at the most, I guess. You know, it could be a fifth, it could be a sixth, it could be a, a tenth. And that's interesting. And I, I think the perception is, oh, it's going to be a much lesser version. But I, I don't think that we can look at it fairly. Just there's so many different factors going into to how that's determined. Yeah. But int- it'll be it'll be interesting for sure. Omega, oh nine seven seven eight says we need a game that utilizes almost all the amigo, uh, amiibo fi- uh, figures with the read right? all the amigos <laughs> i said amiibo. all of all of amigos quavo offset <laughs> take off thanks uh, that utilizes almost all the amiibo figures with the read write function i feel i feel that <laughs> you, now you keep now you have amigos in now you're making me think of like when donald duck is like in the amigos band with like the green parrot and things I feel that amiibo, amigos. I feel that amiibo are still being underutilized because they only scan for bonus items in recent games. Imagine an open world sandbox game like Lego Dimensions, yet you could use your amiibo uh, collection to mash games together. There are so many possibilities where this idea can go, and I hope that Nintendo will make it happen. Amiibo can't be put on shelves forever. Yes, they can. <laughs> but yeah, this has been this has been my dream ever since amiibo were first announced. A a game that is like Lego Dimensions where you scan them and get to be that character, whether it's a Mario Party, whether it's a platform, whether it's some weird, you know, mini game thing, whether it's just a, a walk around and hang out social space. But it seems like Nintendo never has viewed them in that way. Or maybe they have, but then they saw that, you know, Lego Dimensions just isn't what they, like Toys of Life in general aren't what they used to be. Um, and I, I wonder if they just Nintendo doesn't want to spend their time and resources making an open world game when they could make and more generic when they c- could make you know like specialized Yoshi Kirby Mario games. 
Yeah. But is it generic or would it be a fun way to finally utilize these things in more than a physical DLC way? Well, the, the thing is, I don't know if they get a return on their investment. The, the, the heyday of Toys of Life is over. Uh, Skylanders isn't as popular as it used to be. Lego Dimensions is, is you know, gone. The, Disney, one of the biggest companies in the world with some of the of the most sought after and lo- beloved characters in, 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 in fiction, like their Disney 3.0 thing like that went away. They have Star Wars and it didn't work. Yeah, so, but Nintendo still has, I mean, not the same, but there still is a fervor around Amiibo releases. I, I think it's so small. I don't know, but th- that's just what I think. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. I still think it would be awesome. I still think it would be maybe the you know the time frame has passed on that idea, but I I think it would be so cool. And I mostly just for the crossover. You know how much we like that here, and you know how cool that is, and it's fun in like Mario Kart. And I don't know. I just feel like Amiibo. They were insanely successful. They were insanely sought after for a while, and in some cases still are. They're great collectibles. They look awesome on the shelves. But it would have been so much cooler if you could tap in that Captain Falcon amiibo and unlock him in Mario Kart, or you can tap in that Squid Girl amiibo and unlock her in Mario Party 11. Like, they could have just done so much more. I feel like the potential for amiibo was not even 30% realized. Well, they have so many, and they have so many, like, duplicates. So then would every Mario be a different Mario in their open world game? Or would it just be any Mario who gives you Mario in the open world game? Or sandbox game. You know what I mean? Like, they have so many... They just have so many amiibo. It's crazy. Too many, too many amiibo. So many amiibies. Not All enough right. ami- Not enough amigos. Dylan, talking about Smash Bros, speaking of amiibos, uh, you know, we made a video this week talking about how Brawl Out's coming to Switch, and it could be a fun alternative as a holdover. And he says, WTF is this crap. We don't want this garbage being the replacement for Smash Bros. I might as well buy a Wii U. Now... What I want to say is that we never indicated it should be a replacement for Smash Bros. Merely a holdover. And yes, it's not going to have the same it, it ex, the same like passion behind it or even the same quality behind it. But it, it could be a fun multiplayer fighter. Um, and I don't know that it's garbage. I feel like it was pretty well received. And I honestly, I don't think you're going to get Smash for a while. So we were just looking for things that um, could potentially fill that void for now. And... I would like to go to I Am Bobby's comment who has a different perspective on this. I Am Bobby's says, I'm actually quite excited. Now I'm not saying I prefer this over Smash Bros because who in their right minds would, but if Smash never comes to the Switch, this could be a decent replacement. The characters are all original and it doesn't have doesn't really take anything away from the charm of Smash had that Smash had nor improve on it, so I don't know why anyone is angry. Let's just agree this will somewhat fill in the Smash wanting gameplay while we wait for Smash to come out eventually. Yeah, even if it comes out. And then this is what you're basically what you were saying, and I, I totally agree. The characters are very interesting. They have like a forearm luchador frog, um, and again, it's not it's an alternative for the time being to allow you to have some fun couch. Uh, multiplayer smashing action um but again not going to be like nintendo didn't say oh we have brawl out so smash throw it in the garbage now yeah for sure and i think there's many games that in the indie space are kind of filling the void for for certain genres or certain franchises and i don't think that's a bad thing i know that the smash community is very very passionate and rightfully so but no one's saying like hey give us brawl out and just forget about smash but it's impossible for us to know if there even is a port of Smash 4 planned or if they're waiting till a f- you know, full-on follow-up. And so it could be years before anything like that. And so I think things like Pocket Rumble and things like Brawl Out um, are fun ways to enjoy fighting on a Nintendo platform with your friends. And and, and like, like the first guy said, you can always just go back to the Wii U or the Wii or the GameCube or the N64. So... Yeah, I mean, hopefully Virtual Console brings us a little bit of that action, but in the meantime, Brawl Out could still be fun. A Dying Race says, I just had the weirdest idea for Smash Switch. Staying on topic here. What if you could pick up uh, up to two characters and go into battle with them? You would start with the first character and you select uh, that you selected into battle. However, with the press of a button, you could switch, no pun intended, to your second character. So... Uh, and you could even switch in mid attack for some combos. This could bring a new twist to the Smash Bros. series. The tier list would p- probably v- 
probably be messed up though. So they want to turn this into a little bit of uh, some Marvel versus Capcom action, and you know, uh, King of Fighters. I mean, there's a bunch of games that fighting games that have like switching uh, tag, uh, Smash tag tournament. That's what we'll call it. Or Smash I, Switch because they switching. <laughs> I know this is blasphemous, but Smash Bros. Switch and there is a switch up is freaking cool. I. I know it, it like would me- like he says it would mess up the balance, it would mess up the whole style. But like, hey, it can't hurt to try, right? It's always worth a, a change up. You have especially a virtual console is there. You have other Smash Bros that are options, but doing something like this to completely throw the formula on its head, at least for this franchise, I think would be so freaking or what cool. If it- and go ahead, and and just I like the idea of Nintendo taking their tentpole franchises and doing different things with them i think that is kind of the beauty of this era of nintendo is them innovating not just in the the way that the switch is a dual purpose console but also in their titles in their games being new visions of their famous and and beloved franchises I, or if they, what if it, they just had like you were saying tag team and instead of being able to switch like mid fight like you had like four stock or whatever and each character had two so you went like and they had like specific pairings so if you picked like, like, it was a separate mode, and it was the Switch mode, where you had, like, Mar- you could pick, like, Mario Luigi, DK Diddy, Peach Daisy or something, or Wario Waluigi, or Bowser, Bowser Jr., and then, like, the the lives were staggered, so you could do, like, four or six or eight stock, and, like, your first life you have Mario, and then your second life has to be Luigi, and then your third life has to be Mario, and then your fourth life has to be Luigi, and then have, like, we're so, like, you're only having one on screen, and, but, and you can't switch them out mid-fight, but each stock of your lives could be a different character. I don't know, it'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, or what if it was something like you pick two characters and then you got to pick, like when you die, there's like a, a two second countdown or a three second countdown. It's like A for your first character, B for your second. So you would decide depending on the scenario, like do I, I mean, maybe this throws all balance out the window, but like do I want to put Bowser in the fight? And, or do I want to put, it's almost like an Overwatch thing. Like you can switch character between well, the I two mean, kind of like mid mid stock Pokemon or trainer mid, I guess in, in between stock. Pokemon trainer could switch characters mid fight so maybe it's not entirely impossible um to have multi characters that can be switched in and out mid fight Smash Brothers right. Double Dash that's what you call it Why Gabe we already t- talked about the switch it's the perfect name why are you trying to ruin it mm. Smash Bros Switch uh, Dying Race I think you're onto something here I I would love to freaking see this if this ends up having a dying race, you definitely deserve a cookie. Or a Nobel yes. Prize. Because I can see this happening. Like, in, in some iteration. Even if it's just, like, a separate game mode or something. Yes. Uh, Randomation says, I subscribe to you guys because of your perfect Switch launch video and originally thought you were just another small channel making the same predictable videos about the future of Nintendo. However, it has been a thrill to watch your channel quickly evolve into something with enough personalities to not only compete with the other gaming channels, but become my favorite gaming channel on YouTube. Love you guys. Fourth Edge for life. P.S. What is the Fourth Edge? Thank you so much <laughs> for the awesome comment animations. <laughs> Always cool to read stories like that, especially since you were there from like the real beginning days before our channel was even partnered, before anything, uh, any, any sort of major growth took place. It's really awesome. We appreciate you. We love you, and we're very grateful. And then I just love the fact that you said fourth edge for life. What is the fourth edge? The fourth and, edge uh, doesn't I feel like, know what the fourth edge is. I feel like we go through phases of these like running secrets or these running jokes or these running things. Like right now we're in this Toad era, and I kind of like that they are kind of like going through almost like seasons of a TV show. Yeah, we had the has been Gabe era. We have the Toad era. We have the fourth edge era. I'm sure we've had other eras. I just can't remember them. Yeah, there a lot, a lot of a lot of good eras in the past, and a lot of good eras to come. Yep. Uh, sorry, Jacob with a K says, Jacob Stafford says, Matt they, Stafford's brother. <laughs> God. <laughs> they should make a spinoff game that is Octolings with Turf War like usual, but for the single player campaign it is more in depth and you become a rebel Octoling trying to make them good and then have Inklings and Octolings mix or it should be Splatoon 3 like if you agree so everyone can see. Well, there are I don't really need to make a spinoff game. Octolings could possibly be playable according to the data mine um, at some point. I don't know. I feel like this is sort of the same like with the Bowser scenario where you're kind of flipping a franchise on its head just so you can see the other side of things. Um, But I don't know. I mean, I doubt they ever do anything like this, but it's an interesting thought. Make it a smaller game, like a a campaign where you're like, it's the Octolings, 
but it's small. It's like twenty dollars, and I mean, we we keep advocating for things like that. Nintendo just take chances and do like weird things and sell them for like you know way less money because the games are much smaller. But I think something like that could be fun. Ooh, no, I want I want a Splatoon uh, themed game, but as like Zach was saying, like a, like a management type game, like you run a store, right? And since like Splatoon is all about like the fashion and the culture <laughs> of the Inklings, you have to like constantly be updating your store with new stock to like stay up to date, so that you can have like a steady stream of Inklings coming in and purchasing your products. And if you like get, get too stale and don't have enough money to buy new projects or put uh, assets into researching new products, then like you you start losing customers and you just, like gain them back by promoting yourself and doing advertising around Ingopolis and stuff like that. I think that would be a really cool game. That does sound really cool. Or just, you know, the fact that Splatoon has blossomed into this very successful, very big, very popular, very beloved and very, like, discussed franchise. There's tons of art, there's tons of, you know, theories and things like that. Maybe they could do, like, almost like a DLC expansion pack called, like, you know, Splatoon Octoline Assault or something, and it is just a single-player campaign so it could be you know, separately purchased, and you get to play as an Octoline and sort of show, maybe it's like in the past or in the future or something like that, and show how they, you know, came to power or, or you know, whatever the, the storyline would be. But I think I do like the idea of, of taking a deeper dive into a world, and Splatoon seems like, besides Mario, like the uh, most deeper right dive. Right You're now. making puns just like Splatoon wants you to. Let's, deep, let's dive deep into that ink, baby. Yeah, I, I think you're right, and I think Nintendo has done such a good job of creating some of these worlds, like the Mario world, the Donkey Kong world, the Splatoon world, that are so well-themed, and stuff that could be transferred over into real-life merchandise or more games with different aspects to them um, that they need to take advantage of it, because they put so much like time and effort into creating this very flushed-out, very rounded-out world, and they could do so much in it. For sure, and I'm actually, I'm actually going to take the next comment, Gabe, and let you have the last one. Um, just because Keith. I really want to ad- address this. Is that okay? I mean, you could still address it even though I read it, but go ahead. Andreas Clue says, uh, you literally got no new info about the Zelda DLC in this video. We saw that trailer like two months ago. You did have a video already done about it called Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC number two, first footage plus Wind Waker shirt, where you talk about the exact same thing. So why do you clickbait us like that? Can you please not lie in the title? And I just wanted to address this one specifically because this was a total mistake. There was no intention uh, to mislead or anything. Well, I just wanted to let people know that we weren't trying, and I don't think we ever try. I know for a fact we don't ever try to mislead or bait someone into something. This was legitimately a genuine error where there was just a miscommunication between us, and it got remade and and posted. Um, But no, we weren't trying to bait. We didn't realize it. I was out of town, and it just came into uh, existence, and then we became aware of it. Uh, after the video was up there so we apologize and we are striving for uh stuff like this to not happen and you know our channel is still young we still are in the first year and i think that there are some bumps and bruises along the way but we are definitely doing our best to bring you guys the best experience possible and cover the switch stuff in the most fun and and cool way we can so thank you for your feedback we always appreciate it. we always read it positive negative you know criticism is important um and constructive criticism is even more important so thank you for for keeping us on our toes about this stuff and thank you for uh, understanding that sometimes um silly mistakes happen in, in the case of, of this duplicate uh post i don't know how to pronounce this because it's in a foreign language says glad to see nintendo support this game despite the negativity uh i believe that it's- is about arms yeah, I was going to say, I believe this is in reference to ARMS. Um, the update is happening, and then the data mining thing happening that reveals that more cool stuff is probably coming. Uh, Nintendo does a good job of supporting their games, uh, which, you know, is weird to say, because not lock that, not that long ago, Nintendo didn't even do DLC. Now they do a ton of it, and it's free, and they constantly update their games, and they try to maintain whatever community that they have, uh, you know, in, in good spirits, and uh, they do a really good job of it. Uh, and I, I, I have a feeling that Hopefully, with the next update, uh, that should include a new character for ARMS. Maybe there's a, a small little rejuvenation and people go to play the game some more. Even though there's still ple- people playing the game now. Like, you know, I-, I won't say what game, but there's a brand new games that come out that like a week ago that, you know, still has less people playing as Splatoon. Yeah, and you mean then ARMS. Yes. See, there you go. That's me. You like to, you like to swap these games in your head for some yeah, reason. I, 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 they're I, so different. I know. I just, my head is weird. Sorry. Um... I think it is interesting that the perception is that ARMS is not doing well, and yet 
within the ARMS videos, the community still seems to adore the game. And so I think, you know, Nintendo has committed to releasing characters and whatever, and if they can, it's it's still sold well enough. If they can build up a devote and, and long-lasting evergreen player base, I think that's going to be huge for the eventual future of that franchise, if that is something that Nintendo wants to consider. But I do, I do find it interesting that people in general are like, oh, ARMS is a failure, no one's playing. But Whenever we make a video about ARMS, there's definitely a big group of people that are like, we love this game. What are, what are people talking about? It's just, it's interesting. And people still play it. You can easily find matches online. Like, all the, it, it's still good. Like, as far as, like, a a general community, is it, like, thriving? And does it have, like, millions of people? Probably not. But, you know, it is a fighting game. Uh, even the most popular fighting game franchises don't necessarily always have, like, the biggest of communities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's going to do it. A very good comment for us. Uh, see, I told you guys, I felt like that was a real great slate of comments. I feel like you guys and girls nailed it this week, and we hope that you will nail it again next week when we return for comment force number 27. In the meantime, uh, we've got some good stuff happening this week. Sonic Mania is coming out. We're approaching Mario plus Rabbids. Things are moving as we make our way through August and into September on the you Nintendo Switch. You forgot about Troll and I. Oh, Troll game. and I is also there. Gabe's... <laughs> Gabe's favorite game Gabe I feel like I feel like you would be I the kind of troll. troll that would develop a mating call that would just overtake the entire troll kingdom mm. eh, I'll think about it we'll see okay let, let us know if you have any interesting mating calls in the comments down below let us know all of your thoughts and theories and thinkings on today's topics and until next time thanks so much for supporting we love you all and we are ready for another really great week until next time everybody for myself, Jake and Gabe, Switch Force out.